follow-up X-Tools video, delayed only a couple of days by the fact I caught several toddler plagues and the ground between home and the studio froze solid the last few days. Uh, I have the machine set up, I have cut a few pieces with it. The setup process is incredibly straightforward. The machine comes almost ready to work out of the box. You just plug in two leads, connect it up to your computer, put a mat in if you're cutting with the blade, and don't if you're not. The blade setup is very straightforward. You just drop a, a little magnetically attached blade in and um, they give you five blades standard. Set the height correctly and then the whole thing magnets back into the bottom. So then it's ready to cut. It's got the built-in camera so you can see the material through the through the software. Um, the software handles files very straightforwardly. You can see what you're doing on the preview. It's got all the materials that they supply pre-programmed in. So you just pick your material, uh, set it up, and it's ready to go. It does a preview where it shows you the outline of the shape that it's going to cut before it cuts, like this, so that you can see where it's going to be. And you set your framing, make sure you're happy with that. If you are, you just go on the software, press a button on the machine to set it off, and off it goes. And it will cut the shape. Um, it took a few minutes to cut out my logo, and I've done a couple of projects with the cutter, and I'm just starting to test the laser for a few ideas I have for that, uh, and I will do some follow-up videos in a little bit once I've got that ready. But here are the two things that I cut out with the cutter. One project I thought would be a good starting point for this machine was making just a sheet of plastic with my logo cut out of it. And so what you can do with that is making sure I get my logo the right way round. Basically what I've done, that's the way around it should be, I've stepped my logo um, up and down a sheet the software can do a grid for you, but it can't do the offset. So if you want to do this, you'll have to do it yourself in some editing software or their editing software, but do it manually. But I step my logo repeatedly, so you get uh, an array of them. And then I think probably what I want to do is try and get one in the center. I did one just now. I didn't line it up like this. But get it in place, and the great thing is, as the clay squidges in, it then holds itself immovably. So um, that's not going anywhere. And what I'm doing basically is the clay, this is a piece that I threw yesterday, just a flat disc. The clay is fairly hard, but soft enough that this can um, squidge down around it, and the logo can come up so what you've got here is the clay has risen slightly to that level now what you could do is this and then brush on black slip in fact i think i'm going to try that because i can show you this is what it looks like if you don't brush any slip on as i said i didn't line that one up as well as i would going forwards but you get the idea. Little bit of black slip on a brush. Now I don't know if it would be a good idea to do the outer ones, so I'm not going to. Just make sure these are nice and covered. And then what you should get, hopefully, is a very crisp design when you lift it off. So that was an easy little thing to do. Um, don't know what I'll use it for particularly. I mean, this is kind of cool. You make coasters like that. Um, 
can try some other stuff with it, but as a test of concept, I'm really happy with this. That whole thing took, I think it was about 10 minutes to cut um, with one of the sheets of material that they provide and it works perfectly. And the, res the, the quality of the design, I'm not sure, let's see how much I can get this to focus. But um, particularly if I show you the one without slip on, you can see the quality of the line cut actually looks significantly better on the clay than it does the, it looks good on the cut, but it's hard to see exactly, but you get all, all the details are exactly as they should be on my logo. So the, the little step of the anvil and the shape of the foot, it's all perfect. So yeah, really happy with that one. I used the some of the sticker material that they provided to make little paw print cutouts. This is for a batch of mugs that I promised my gran. But I wanted to test the idea with these. Basically, what I'm going to do <coughs> is use the sticker material to mask off. Um, a shape which I will then paint through with um, underglaze or slip or I could use actual glaze it's gonna look like that so I've got a paw print right it's gonna look like that and I stick that <coughs> onto a piece I'm going to do a couple of them before I apply the underglaze. I'm going to test underglaze on a bisqued piece and slip on a greenware piece. And the reason for that is very simple. Underglaze is formulated to um, not to have much shrinkage. It's halfway between a clay and a glaze, whereas my slip is just made of my normal clay. So if I paint the slip onto a bisqued piece, the clay will shrink, the bisque piece won't shrink at all, um, and it will fall off, whereas I can get away with it on a even quite dry... Uh, oh, that one. I poked the inner bits out, but um, they stayed attached. Right, I'll do one more. Maybe it didn't quite get as perfect a cut because the inner paw prints want to stay attached to the overall, which I I think it's probably the cutter settings. I think just a fraction more pressure would have worked better. But we've got pour print. Got, I don't tend to use much underglaze. So this has been sat around a while. I've added a little water to make it runnier, although it's not very runny. Let's see. I think. This underglaze is probably not the best consistency for this. I've started, so I will continue. I think that works a bit better if I um, don't apply quite so much to it. I was hoping the surface tension would work to pull it in more, which I think it would have done if my underglaze was runnier which it would be if it wasn't so old. So, uh, there we go. Right, I'll give that a moment to dry. While I do the same for a greenware bit. Now really what I'm testing more than anything with the greenware is whether or not it pulls the greenware apart. I can't remember exactly what I tried. Something stuck to greenware, which then took lumps out of it. So I'm hoping this sticker material 
isn't sticky enough. Obviously, um, this is just a sticker material. So if this doesn't work, that doesn't mean the idea is flawed, just the sticker material. The sticker material is not flawed, it's just not right for Greenware. Right, stuck. Now, this is slit with 1% cobalt, making it very blue when fired. Actually, I want a much more even coat with this, because the slit will um, keep its height. That's the other thing. The other difference between slip and underglaze is that underglaze, because it's halfway between a clay and a glaze, and it doesn't have that much clay in it, which gives it less shrinkage, and it goes on much thinner will preserve much more detail whereas the slip has built up already to form a layer so let's try peeling this off not bad i think i put too much on so going to be lessons to learn with this and I probably should have done something to make it easier to get this back off I could have just folded a corner over or something hopefully I can get this off without marking the clay so nice little pulp incidental which is what I was aiming for and then that will fire to a very dark blue and the underglaze ones have dried where it can be absorbed by the bisque wear and not where it can't. Um, and the, the sticker sticks a lot more to this. It's impressive just how well stuck that is. But super crisp pour. Um, and doesn't seem to have lifted the design off at all, which is good. I'm very happy with that. I mean, obviously, this is not a, it's not the most complicated stencil, and it's something that you could probably just buy as a pre-existing thing. But the point is that. Um, while it's not a particularly interesting artwork, this is artwork I created specifically to do this. So this could just as easily be something entirely custom. The fact it's just a generic pour is for the sake of testing rather than any limitation on what it can actually do. So, really happy with that. That is super, super crisp. It's cut it perfectly, it's transferred really well. That's going to fire, um, it's just going to fire as it is. Uh, it will become fused to the flat surface, but obviously you could stick those around a mug, which is what I'm going to do with the remainder. So yeah, really happy with that. So those two projects worked really well. I'm happy with how both of them come out and there's a lot of potential to develop on that. This execution has been very basic, but the possibilities are far greater than this. So I'm looking forward to seeing where I go with those. The laser is going to be interesting to play with once I get a chance to do that properly. And yeah, overall, very impressed with how easy it was to set up, easy it was to use, how well the software worked and how beginner friendly it was. I used 3D printer and a CNC milling machine and the software to get this running is so much easier than either of those and i will post another video when i have more results